When talking about the desert, people immediately think of the blazing sun, the scorching heat, the sand and thorny cacti growing in the sandstorm or the camels slowly walking, the feeling of burning hot during the day and freezing cold at night. That is the specialty of this place. But have you ever thought that you can enjoy fresh seafood in the middle heart of the desert? Yes, you heard right. When the life of creatures or vegetation is still difficult, China has created a miracle, not only successfully greening the desert, but also creating a sea in the heart of the desert to raise seafood with extremely high yields, which amazes the world. In today's video, I'll explore with you how China can create this miracle. But before getting to the main content of the video, we hope that you will show your support by liking the video and clicking subscribe to the channel to accompany us on new journeys of discovery. We appreciate your thoughts and invite you to share your thoughts and feelings in the comment section below. And without wasting time anymore, let's start the journey. You know what China looked like about 30 years ago? Most of this country's area was arid desert that was not covered with green trees like it is now. Try to imagine a piece of land with tens of thousands of hectares but only sunshine, wind and sand. What a special image it would be. But that was in the past. Now China has completely changed. Chinese government has realized that the potential in improving deserts is extremely large, especially in the agricultural sector. So, they began to build and implement plans to turn worthless deserts into fertile agricultural fields. Applying the world's first desert terraforming technology, China has covered the longest desert highway in Xinjiang with green forests. Besides, according to SCMP, China's Xinjiang Autonomous Region has had new technological breakthroughs in freshwater and saltwater aquaculture, including freshwater fish, tiger shrimp, abalone, and lobster. This is one of the remarkable successes in this desert area. Recently, Xinjiang aquaculture company Xi Xixian, founded in 2022, said it was successful in a pilot project to develop technology to simulate seawater in a fishing ground located at the edge of the desert. Mr. Chen Jiazhen, the leader of the project, said that natural salt water in southern Xinjiang had salinity close to seawater. According to a China Business Herald article published by the China Association of Science and Technology earlier this month, this would facilitate artificial Mari culture, with the company's goal to increase access to seafood in China's inland areas. We took advantage of the saline alkaline soil, adjusted the probiotic levels, and added other micronutrients to the water to simulate different seawater environments necessary for the different species, Chen said. This information was released in mid-August, but was only recently spread amid concerns about seafood security following the water release from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Recently, China banned all Japanese seafood products in response to the discharge of wastewater from a nuclear plant devastated by the earthquake and tsunami 12 years ago. The company has about 60 indoor ponds with greenhouses used to compensate for temperature differences in Xinjiang. The company has developed eight different types of seafood, which are grown indoors before being transferred to outdoor ponds. Chinese media cited the expansion of seafood production in Xinjiang as a typical example when China pushed local scholars and officials to find ways to modernize agriculture and ensure security for the supply of agricultural products. Sharing about aquaculture, Guo Junwei, a manager at Xinjiang Benteng Biotechnology Company, said that the company sold each kilogram of black tiger shrimp for 200 yuan. Thanks to that, the income and lives of people in the area have been positively improved. This is also a typical example of this country's rural economic development model. According to the United Nations, China has long been the world's largest seafood producer and accounts for at least 18% of total global seafood catch. Beijing increasingly emphasizes the importance of food security, aiming at being more independent in agricultural production in the context of an unstable global food market, affected by geopolitical tensions, climate change, and war. Xinjiang is one of seven locations chosen as a pilot area to produce salt-alkaline-tolerant rice, also known as seawater rice, to increase crop yields. However, 
The arid environment also challenges the sustainability of agricultural development due to lack of water. Fish farms in Xinjiang previously produced freshwater seafood because companies were able to utilize water supplies from high-altitude lakes, water comes from snowmelt in mountainous areas, or pump groundwater up from under the mountain. Xinjiang authorities are aiming to increase annual seafood output to about 30.000 tons by 2025. China plans to increase seafood output to 69 million tons in the same year. According to Xinhua News Agency, freshwater fishing activities in Xinjiang also help people earn significant income. Under the soft light of morning, fishermen Xu Qingshui steer their fishing boat toward the center of Boston Lake, preparing for a busy day of work. Located in the Xinjiang Autonomous Region, Boston, the country's largest inland freshwater lake, enters its busiest fishing season from August until October. Since 2018, a total of 807 million cubic meters of water has flowed into Lake Boston from the Kaidu River, improving the water circulation efficiency and water quality of the lake. The vast reed beds of Lake Boston, covering more than 40.000 hectares, play an important role in the ecosystem. They can help filter water and provide habitat and shelter for many different species of birds and aquatic life. The lake is now home to an increasing number of wild bird species, with 198 species observed to date. The good ecological environment has injected new vitality into the lake, making it the largest fish production base in Xinjiang. It produces more than four tons of various seafood each year, including grass carp, freshwater shrimp, and crabs. Yuan Jianwei, the owner of the crab farming facility, said, Last year, we released 36 million crab seeds and started harvesting in August this year. After that, we plan to feed Australian freshwater lobsters and expand the farming scale so that more consumers can enjoy Xinjiang's seafood products. In 2022, Xinjiang's total seafood output reached 173 tons, ranking second among the five provinces and autonomous regions in northwest China. The idea of creating a sea in the middle of the desert has been around for a long time, but the success with this model once again proves China's strength to the world. In 1957, scientists came up with the idea of creating a sea in the middle of the Sahara Desert. The first person to initiate the idea was a Scottish engineer, Donald Mackenzie. He wanted to flood the El Juf Basin, turning it into the Sahara Sea. Mackenzie proposed creating a 644-kilometer long canal from Morocco to the basin, thereby forming an inland sea as large as Ireland, 96.560 square kilometers. Similarly, in the 1870s, inspired by the Suez Canal, Captain Francois-Élie Ruder of the French Army proposed building a 193-kilometer long canal connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Chat el fakhej Salt Lake area in the Sahara Desert in southern Tunisia, thereby inundating 4.828 square kilometers of sandy land. This idea received the support of Ferdinand de Lesseps, a French diplomat very famous for directing the construction of the Suez Canal. The cost to implement the idea at that time was about 25 million francs, 4.2 million USD. The plan would help open more trade routes for French ships, De Lesseps and his friends wanted to make central North Africa a wetter and more fertile place. However, several expeditions there discovered that the area was not actually below sea level, and rising costs made the ambitious plan never become a reality. Although it failed, the plan still inspired the writer Jules Verne to mention the construction of the canal in his novel Invasion of the Sea in 1905 in which an earthquake contributed to the creation of an inland sea in northern Africa. Another plan to bring the sea into the Sahara Desert was proposed in Egypt. The Plowshare Project was an initiative of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. Researchers calculated that 213 nuclear bombs would need to be detonated to create a canal that would flood the Katara Depression 60 meters below sea level. However, several international agreements prohibited the detonation of nuclear bombs, and the Plowshare Project ended in 1977. More recently, in 2018, a Silicon Valley company called Y Combinator introduced the idea of dealing with global warming by flooding the Algodones Desert area in California. 
Their plan was to create millions of 0.4 hectare water reservoirs to grow algae, acting as carbon sinks. However, with a cost of about 50 trillion USD, this project has not yet been promoted. Currently, the threat of desertification is threatening the world. The international community has long recognized that desertification is a broad problem related to all three areas, economy, society, and environment of many countries around the world. The United Nations has warned that the process of desertification represents one of the biggest environmental challenges of our time. The United Nations announcement shows that by 2030, the fashion industry is expected to use 35% more land, mostly to grow raw materials for low-cost fashion. The amount of food we lose or waste every year is equivalent to the production capacity of 1.4 billion hectares of productive land. And with current consumption, by 2030, we will need an additional 300 million hectares of land for food production to ensure food security for the global population. However, in a reverse development, the limited resource land is under the threat of serious decline. Each year, more than 12 million hectares of land are lost due to land degradation, desertification, and recurring droughts. This is the process by which once fertile land is degraded by drought, deforestation, or overfarming, or by climate change. During this process, the nutrients in the soil become so depleted that the soil is no longer fertile and eventually becomes dry. Without timely intervention, they will enter the process of desertification and gradually lose their ability to produce. China's increasing success in greening deserts and turning them into places with high economic potential has solved a difficult problem for the world. What do you think about this unbelievable success of China? Please share with us below in the comment section. See you again in the latest videos of